Hello everyone, welcome to this video about flow or how to create flow as a gypsy jazz guitar player. And it's not something that is only for gypsy jazz guitar players, but um, one thing that is common to all um, very good gypsy jazz players is the incredible sense of flow they have during their solos. And there are several reasons uh, for that to be important. And one of the main reasons is that in Gypsy Jazz, there is not that much interaction between the solo player and the rhythm section. Uh, the rhythm section is kind of static, um, and that is because there is no drummer and usually there's no piano player. There's a rhythm guitar, and the rhythm guitar is mainly doing the same thing for the whole song. There are some rhythm rhythmic fills they can make, but they're kind of trying to keep, or they should be trying to keep, the rhythm very um, solid, and that means that it is kind of static. It can be dynamic, but there's not much rhythmic variation. That means that as a solo player in Gypsy Jazz, you cannot really start a rhythmic conversation with um, members of the rhythm section. So that means that there's a lot of pressure on the solo player to have a kind of uh, flow, constant flow, I, I don't want to say constant flow of notes, but a constant flow of ideas. And, and sometimes that means that you have to play a, a lot of notes. And of course, you can play a lot of random notes, but there is a way in Gypsy Jazz to um, make this a lot easier for yourself if you are familiar with the diminished arpeggios, because diminished arpeggios can really give you a lot of ammunition to use um, in solos. And today I want to discuss how to combine these diminished arpeggios with the altered sound. And the altered sound is a sound that is uh, used in Gypsy Jazz nowadays all the time. And there's basically two ways to, to create it. So I'm talking about the, the sound on dominant chords. You can either play a Phrygian dominant skill on the uh, dominant chords. So we're talking about uh, C7 in the examples. So you could play the C Phrygian dominant skill, which is the same skill as the F uh, harmonic minor skill. Or you could play um, a D flat minor melodic skill, which is called the altered skill. And you know me, I don't want to go too much in theory, but I can just show you where these sounds are on the guitar. And let's start with what I use from the, the altered skill, because I don't use the whole skill. I use um, a pattern that is, is used all over the place in, in by every jazz player. It doesn't matter if it's gypsy jazz or bebop or, or beyond. If they want to play an altered sound, a lot of people they use a, a six note pattern. And the way I think of it is if you have C7, you play an A flat major scale, the first five notes, so. And then you go half note up, half note up to the E. And you repeat that uh, across several octaves. So you get. And usually this scale is played downwards, uh, descending, so. So if I start high, you would get... C7 altered. Probably a sound you really recognize. And the other way is of course with the Phrygian dominant scale, and I made a whole video where I discuss fingerings for this scale. I will link it under this video. and. Um, that is basically a harmonic minor scale. I don't want to go over the, the fingerings again. So what I created for you is what I call um, the Gypsy Jazz Loops. You know, I'm all about catchy names. And what it means is that I play a diminished arpeggio up and I go down with this altered sound. And um, I have four positions for you, or eight, because uh, I start every position both on the uh, e string and on the A string. And I just want to go over those lines and then I want to show you how you could use this in your solos. And the way I 
approach this this concept is that I this is the basis of my playing on dominant chords, and then all the other phrases I study, all the the licks and the phrases, they are in between my use of these um, this these loops, and that way I can create a kind of personal sound of, of using these loops because everybody's using some uh, variation of these loops and by adding all the other phrases that I can get from any player in any style, I uh, create a new sound. So let's go over the, these loops. So the first one starts from the root of uh, C7. It goes like this. One, two, three, four. And you can start um, on the low E string. It's, it's, it's very similar, it's a little bit different. It goes like this, one, two, three, four. So basically, it's, these loops, they start on the C or the G, and they end, they go up and they go down and they end up at the C again. And I go up with a diminished arpeggio and I go down, in this case, with that altered scale. So one more time from the low G, three, four. Oh, to the C, sorry. One more time. And I made these lines up especially for you because um, you can, I mean, this is what I basically play, but the, the starting point and the end point they can be different, right? Now I go from C to C, but I could stop anywhere. I could start anywhere, but this is a good way to practice it. So let's go to the uh, next line. And also I, I will play all these lines at the end of the video with a backing track, with a, just a static C7 chord. So you can practice that with me on Sound Slice. And the link for, the, uh, for Sound Slice integration is always under the video. Okay, let's go to the next uh, phrase starts on the third of e, C7, on the E, and it goes like this. One, two, three, four. Three, four. Make sure if you practice that you really try to practice it in a swing rhythm, right? To da do da do da do da. And then this line starting from the low E string, we start on the B flat, three, four. So again, up with diminished arpeggio, and I always start on a chord tone, so either the root, the third, the fifth, or the seventh, and I go down, in this case, with the frigid dominant scale, or F minor melodic, uh, harmonic, F minor harmonic. Uh, so fast, they would sound like this, one, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, and the next one starts on the fifth. And it goes like this. One, two, three, four. Three, four. So the, the triplet, always the triplets are usually picked like this. So two slurred, one up. But if it's this slow, sometimes I play so I play, uh, the, I slur the last two, but usually I play these uh, phrases pretty fast and then I try to really play a triplet. Mm -hmm. 
And this line starting from uh, the low E string goes like this, starts on the root. One, two, three, four. And then the last two lines starting uh, on the A string on the B flat, so the seven, goes like this, one, two, three, four. Starting from the low E string, one, two, three, four. I got a question on another video that I, if I'm not worried about strings ringing while I'm playing on other strings because of the hand position in Gypsy Jazz that I'm not muting the strings, but you know, you don't have to worry about that because in this in this lick you can hear those low that low E ring. Because it's the same as the harmonic. So then if you don't mute it, then it will ring. But you know, you will never hear that in Gypsy Jazz. First of all, you play this pretty fast and also there is a rhythm section playing. And you won't you won't notice this. See, I'm, I'm not confused because I play this uh, lick in many variations, but again, the one that's on the tap, one, two, three, four. Okay, so these phrases should, you should practice on every dominant chord, and maybe the easiest way to do it is to just pick a song and look at the dominant chords in, in that song, and then practice uh, the different phrases. So, for example, let's say you have uh, Sweet Georgia Brown, and let's play it in, uh, in in G. So then it's E7 for four bars, A7, G, D7 to G. So in E7, you could start maybe here. And you go to A7. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to link all these uh, arpeggios, all those loops to each other, right? By looking where my hand ends up and then picking the next closest line, next closest loop in the new uh, chord. Let's say I have, I'm in the last two bars of uh, E7, and I play the first loop. And now I want to go to A7, so the closest on A7 would actually be the, the fifth itself. Or I could go down to the low A, right? And this this will be pretty challenging in the beginning because you won't see those connections. But you just gotta practice this all the time. Practice these loops all the time. Every song you encounter, practice your loops. See if you can make connections. And you don't have to do this in time. Just play one chord, practice your loops, and see if you could switch at any point to the next chord. And you don't have to start on the one, like in the examples. I just did that to make it easy to show you. But you could uh, start these lines on any beat. If it's Sweet Richard Brown, I could go one, two, three, four, one. I switch to another loop. See, I, I'm here, and instead of going down with the first loop, I go down with the, the second loop. You know, there's, there's many uh, things you can combine, and all those lines will sound uh, fresh every time if you combine them in different ways. And now you add to that all the other phrases, all the other great lines you can get 
from transcribing. And th there's also many videos uh, on my channel that I show you great lines. And the song I was playing in the beginning was a song called um, Lover Come Back To Me. But I was using the chords of uh, the contrafact that was written by Coleman Hawkins called Bean in the Boys. It's almost the same, there's a, a few different chords. And I was just trying to um, play some of these loops combined with my own phrases. And of course, it's not planned. So maybe I played more or I played less of the loops. It's just a safe point for me. I can always go to these loops. Um, maybe just to give you an example, let me play the first loop, this one. On um, Lover Come Back To Me. So I will play it with the backing track. So it starts the two bars of A flat, and then it's a two five to F minor. And on this two five and F minor, I'm not I'm not gonna think G half diminished. I, I just think C seven, and I play this loop, and try to end up in F minor. Uh, let's do that. <laughs> And I was going over the bar, I was still on the loop on F minor, but that's not a problem. Let's try it with the second loop. But let's not start down, let's start here. So I was playing, I was using these loops all over the place, right? And it's actually very exciting to be doing that because you will find new possibilities every time you try it. It's just um, um, a very convenient way of creating this flow I was talking uh, about in the beginning, right? You can, you you have the, the ability to play constant, a constant flow of notes that all sound good. That doesn't mean you have to do it. I was trying to do it as a demonstration purpose, but of course, when you are in a real life situation, just play some octaves, play chords, you know, take some rest, play with the loops, don't play them in eighth notes all the time. But just the fact that you can do it, that you can create this flow will give you a lot of um, confidence to experiment. Uh, let me try it again, and I'm, I'm gonna try to, to not play eighth notes with the loops, but maybe like quarter triplets or play some chords in between. Let's see. Like that, you know, I mean, uh, probably could be better, could be worse too, but it's just uh, about experimenting. Also in this really fast tempo, it's uh, probably <laughs> uh, more appropriate also to create this kind of flow. In a slower tempo, you have more freedom to experiment with different rhythms. Okay, now for the end of the video, I'm gonna play 
all the loops with a backing track and I need to record a new one because now it's uh, been in the voice. I need to record C7. Okay, so I'll be right back. Okay, I recorded C7 in a slower tempo and um, let's do it. I'm going to play every line three times and I'll combine uh, the first line from the A and the E string. So you'll hear ses, six, ses, that's Dutch. <laughs> you'll hear six phrases. And of course, on sound slides, you can loop it, you can slow it down. Uh, the tap is synced with my hands, so check it out. Again, the link is under this video. And also, before we get started with this, as always, if you like the videos, please click the like button, subscribe, that really helps me out. And if you want to do a little bit more, you can always support me on Patreon. Uh, check out the page, it's linked. But only support me on Patreon if you can afford it, if uh, a couple of bucks a month don't, do not make any difference for you. Uh, if you can't afford it, please enjoy the videos for free. And um, let's go, let's start with the, the loops. Here we go. Okay, let's go to um, the second one, starting from the E and the B flats. Uh, let's go. And the third one. And the last two, starting from the B flat and the low E. That was it. I hope you like the phrases or the loops and um, start practicing and I see you all in the next video. Bye!